Hey everyone, Tess at Voyager here, and no, I am not in your inbox. Today we are switching things up a little bit. As you know, Voyager is all about giving our traders access to more. More coins, more liquidity, and of course, more information. So today we are super excited to share with you a very special interview. We have the founder of the IOTA Foundation, Dom Sheener, here, and we're going to cover how IOTA came to be, some exciting recent announcements, and what's up next for the foundation. Voyager is proud to be the only U.S. broker that offers access to IOTA, along with 19 other crypto assets, 100% commission free. Make sure to check us out at investvoyager.com and follow us at investvoyager on Facebook and Twitter. Voyager is now available in 49 U.S. states, excluding New York. Download today in the iOS App Store. All right, Dom, let's get started. Welcome. Hello. Very nice to be here. So, Dom, what was your first experience with crypto? What was the factor that led you to start innovating in the sphere? So, I've been involved in the whole blockchain slash cryptocurrency space since late 2011 and really got involved full time in 2012. The reason why I got involved is because at the time I was sort of doing this online hustling phase where I was trying to earn money by doing drop shipping, e commerce, and so on and so forth. And because uh, PayPal had this age restriction, I wasn't really able to open a PayPal account. So you had to be 18 years old. And as such, I was so, sort of excluded from this entire economy and this, this potential. Right? And so that is how I then was introduced to Bitcoin in late 2011. And, and I, I immediately grasped this concept of, of and this power of permissionless innovation. Right now, a person like myself was able to actually start accepting and, and transferring money globally without, it, without any restrictions. And it was a, also able to contribute towards this new economy that is going to be created. And after that, I actually uh, became so convinced of it that I obviously started joining it full time. And I started out with mining some altcoins where I made some money off of that. And then I went, went on to my first venture, which was to create a cryptocurrency exchange. Because obviously at the time, uh, I assumed that it would be a huge moneymaker and would open up so many new opportunities. But soon I obviously faced these very difficult challenges, which was all around regulations, banking, and legal. Because at the time, blockchain wasn't even on the horizon. And every time you spoke with a bank, for example, they always said, hey, please never contact us again. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's also how I initially got involved in, in, in the Crypto Valley in Zug in, in early 2013. So that's also how I met other people from the Ethereum Foundation and, and uh, other projects because we were trying to set up a self-regulating organization, but in the end uh, that uh, failed. And so that's also why my first startup failed. And after that, I, I started to immerse myself much more with the technology itself, how it works and so on and so forth. And, and that's why we then created and founded IOD in 2015, which has been my main focus ever since. Wow. So you've, you've been in the blockchain for a while. Yeah, exactly. And, and yeah, I, f I feel a lot older than I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> so following up on that, where did the idea of Iota come from? You obviously were immersed in the sphere for a while, but what was the problem you were trying to solve with Iota? Yeah, so the four founders of Iota have obviously all been involved in this entire crypto space since the very, very early days. And we had some very deep uh, knowledge on the technology itself. Like, for example, Sergey Ivan Ceglo created the first full proof of stake blockchain, which was called NXT. And me and David Sensible were very interested in, in the technology and also obviously on the business side. And the interest, the, the idea behind IOTA really came from, from this idea that the Internet of Things really needs a trust layer. So the Internet of Things can only really be unleashed, uh, unleashed and fully unleashed in its potential if we really have trust in the data that we get, because IoT is all about automation. And you can only automate if the data that you get can actually be verified, because else you run at fault that your process uh, can be uh, jammed or hacked or, uh, and that such the entire system can crumble. And the second reason why you obviously need the blockchain for, for IoT is for transactions. You need to be able to settle machine to machine payments and transactions. And through that, you obviously enable new business models and completely new applications, which are all in this realm of automation and autonomous machines. 
And so with this with this uh, idea that we want to have this convergence of blockchain and IoT, we, we then went to the drawing board and obviously realized that blockchain itself is inherently limited in terms of its applicability to IoT and also its current limitations. So obviously b back then the discussions were about, hey, transaction fees are very high or are going to rise even further with the adoption and the scalability is very much limited. And because in IoT we talk about very small machines that are resource constricted, and most importantly, those machines want to send around micropayments, uh, blockchain itself is not suited. And that is why we then invented this, uh, this new approach, which is called the Tangle. So it no longer uses a block or a chain or miners, but has a different way to achieve the consensus in this network. And the main benefit there is really that it's much more scalable and has no transaction fees. And with this technology, we, we really hope to unleash this full potential of, of the, uh, distributed ledgers and the full potential of IoT. So you talk a lot about a digital infrastructure and you kind of touched on that with the last question, but can you explain what that would look like and how it would impact the internet of things and different markets and industries? Yeah, so <clears throat> many people always ask us, why do you primarily focus on IoT? And it's a very simple answer. IoT is going to be everything. Everything will be connected, everything will be smart, and everything really needs to have this ability to transact with each other. Because that is the way that we envision the future. And the future obviously looks like that all of those processes around us are going to be automated by these machines and by uh, the systems that make up our, our entire infrastructure. And we, we as a protocol, we are focused on really connecting this human with the machine economy. And that is where the infrastructure component comes from. Because at the end of the day, we want to make the lives of people e uh, easier and simpler. So they don't have to worry about processes today. A good example is, why do you have to leave your car to get a paper ticket for your parking? Right? All of these processes around you should be automated. And we as IOTA, we see ourselves really as the backbone of this machine economy and this, as the backbone that makes up this entire infrastructure around us. OK, when you talk about scalability um, in a decentralized world, there's a lot of criticism around that, and the Tangle Network solves for a lot of that. Can you talk about how remaining decentralized is important or is potentially better? Yeah. I, th I think the story really goes back to also my first experience with blockchain. Imagine if I had to join a consortium in order to participate in a permissioned uh, blockchain network. I wouldn't have been able to participate simply because of age restrictions and other restrictions. And decentralization, decentralization really ensures this permissionless component of the future. And that is one of the most important and most, most compelling one, simply because only through this decentralized and permissionless network, you will be able to unleash the full potential of a distributed ledger and also the full economic potential that comes from it. And that is why you can definitely not have a distributed ledger that is not decentralized or that is going to be controlled by a consortium, by contracts or by a few players. And so we at, at the IOTA Foundation, we started a project with a very different mindset. First of all, we realized that full decentralization is something very difficult to achieve when you also want to have scalability and no transaction fees. And so we started a network knowing that we as an organization need to grow. We need to get more researchers and engineers on board to actually make sure that we have a protocol that we are confident in that can achieve this and solve this, this uh, decentralization trilemma. And this is exactly what we think we've achieved right now, and that is what we're working on, and, and that is called Cordicide. So it's basically our, pro, our further improvement upon the first ideas that we had on the Tangle to achieve a scalable, decentralized, fearless, and enterprise-ready distributed ledger technology. The topic of centralization versus decentralization, data management and privacy has been a huge topic as of late. Can you talk about how IOTA is making people's data more private and more secure and how important that is? Yeah, so this all comes back to the origin of, of Bitcoin. It was all about you can be your own bank, you have ownership, you have control. And this is a very important principle for the future that not 
specific entities and companies or governments hold what is most important to you, which is your data and your money. And obviously with distributed ledgers, we have achieved this goal of making sure that you own your own money. But now with what's been happening over the last few years where many people have realized that the internet and these data gathering companies have really caused a digital divide in our, in our society, we need to think radically different on how we manage data, how we give access to data and how we monetize data. So the European Union has already done a good effort in that in trying to bring forth new regulations, which, which, which they did with GDPR. And the next puzzle piece here is really uh, technologies like ours, which makes it possible for people to actually own their own data and make decisions with who they share their data with. What's very exciting about IOTA, and this comes back to our infrastructure play, is that we see ourselves as a transactional settlement layer. And what we perceive as a transaction can contain value. And with value, we mean either data or we mean money, meaning the token. So that means you can today utilize the IOTA distributed ledger without any token. So it's, that's one of the most unique components of, of our technology. So that means you can really have encrypted and secure data channels and only certain authorized parties can actually read that data. And the applications are obviously huge. We, we already today have a digital, a, a digital identity platform and protocol that is actually built on top of IOTA, or we have asset tracking, we have um, secure audit trails, chain of custody, all running on IOTA and securing data for assets, machines, and for humans. And this is really how, how the future is going to look like, that people can make decisions, what happens with the data, and who gets access to it. Yeah, we love that you touched on that. Data is value, money is value. And if you don't think data has value, then you don't realize how much Facebook is worth or <laughs> some of these big internet companies. Yeah, and, and I mean, this is really what's been happening lately that people are starting to wake up, hey, all of those free services, how do they make money? The main way they make money is through us as users who give away their data. And they're not just making a few million dollars, they're making billions of dollars off of monetizing you. And that is a huge radical shift in people's mindset now. And I think all with that educational barrier that is now being erased, people are also starting to wake up. And it, I am, I'm pretty excited about the future and, and how we can really revolutionize this, this entire industry and make sure yeah. that people own the data. The timing is pretty perfect for you guys. Yeah. So on that, what are the challenges that you're facing? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, we have been around since 2015. Uh, we only raised a very small funding round uh, in our token sale or our, our, our sale, which was around $500,000, which is nothing compared to other <laughs> projects. Mm -hmm. And with that, we've built up the entire projects, uh, the entire project. And so since the very early days, it's been an uphill battle for us to really prove that DAX, which is the uh, concept behind the Tangle, actually are, are secure and can work in, in, in the future and also getting adoption. And we are regulated a nonprofit foundation in Germany also because we want to be regulated. So that's one challenge because we cannot do what other projects do. So we have a very strict budget on what we can spend money on and what, can, what we cannot spend money on. We have also much smaller funding in that regard compared to other ICO projects. But I think the biggest challenge for us and for all of the other projects is to really cross this technology chasm. But everything today is still a proof of concept and nothing has really been proven to work in a very scalable and very widely adopted manner. So we as an entire industry we need to get out of this proof of concept stage and make sure that the technology is ready and that the ecosystem is ready. And so that is really our primary focus on, on tackling these problems on the technology side, on the ecosystem side, and on the governance side. Meaning that our technology is really hosted in a vendor neutral and open environment so that everybody can contribute. Because at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the day, we are talking about the protocol that is going to uphold billions of dollars of value. And as such, we need to have a proper framework on who can contribute who makes decisions and so on. Operating under regulation in Germany, what do you think is going to happen in the U.S.? Um, there's been a lot of talk about regulation and how the U.S. is going to choose to control this asset class. What do you think about that and what do you think the biggest challenges are? So two things beforehand. The obvious thing is 
blockchain and cryptocurrencies cannot be fundamentally regulated. So you cannot out-regulate them, you cannot completely ban them. Yeah. And the second the obvious point is that we need regulation. But the, we really need proper regulation that takes into account the input from all of the industry players. So the, the, the exciting part is that we are already doing this in Europe, where we have co-founded this new organization together with the European Commission, which is called INAPA. So it's like a think tank slash forum where all of these industry players come together to try and shape new regulation. And this is not just a European effort, but this is also going to be a global effort. So I do hope that the U.S. regulators are also going to take a similar approach whereby they really take into account what the industry thinks and how they want to be regulated. Because if we don't regulate this properly, we can really limit, we are, we are going to really limit the potential of these new technologies. So I'm not fully aware of, of, of on which level the decisions are being made or the discussions are being held. But I think the most important part is simply that the industry is really involved here and that we really have the voice as a collective to try and shape this regulation. Definitely. But, um, we're super excited to have IOTA listed on Voyager. Um, what does expanding to the U.S. mean to you? Yeah, so the U.S. has always been a very, uh, or especially recently, has been a very important market for us because we are expanding them more. We are hiring more people in the United States. So far, we have done an excellent job in getting corporate and government adoption in Europe. So we have many projects running there. And now we're starting to do a lot more in the United States. So for one, we are working with governments, like, for example, Austin, or we're working with new companies in the United States. But at the same time, we also want to really expand this financial infrastructure because that is, be, that is one of the main strengths of the United States as well. And so that's why we are very excited to start talking with companies like yourself, with exchanges, uh, with banks, to really be part of this financial infrastructure. Because at the end of the day, what we want to achieve at IOTA is to actually bring the currency part back into cryptocurrency. Because the worst thing that can happen for cryptocurrencies is that they remain a speculative asset, and they were just there to make a bunch of nerds rich. <laughs> because the true potential of cryptocurrencies is, is it to really unlock these new opportunities for people all around the globe and offer them opportunities, uh, include them in our global economy and make it possible for them to actually contribute. And with, with only with cryptocurrencies, we can remove the trust in trade. We no longer need to sign contracts and we can really enable frictionless trade. And that is going, going to be so enormous in unlocking these new innovations for the future, like this machine economy that we are building. And so especially with, with companies and banks and so on and so forth that we talk with in the United States, I hope that we can really solve this issue and make uh, IOTA really one of the first currencies that really has uh, real utility and real use. As a crypto trading platform, we agree with all of that. Our goal is to get <laughs> as many hands as we can. <laughs> you guys are coming off a pretty huge announcement with Jaguar Land Rover. Congratulations. Can you yeah, tell us a thanks. bit about this partnership and what it means for the foundation? Yeah, so recently we have announced our partnership with Jaguar Land Rover. And basically what, they're, what they have developed is a Kari wallet that actually utilizes the IOTA protocol and the IOTA cryptocurrency. And what we are focused on there is to offer new services to uh, uh, vehicle owners and to also make a more seamless interaction with the infrastructure and with the city and with the government. And one uh, good example there is we are doing a data trading so that you can actually sell data from your vehicle. Think about today when you uh, drive around with your vehicle and you uh, use Waze. But Waze obviously requires participation, meaning that you click on the dashboard and say, hey, like here's traffic, here's a pothole, and so on and so forth. Now, with this application that we've developed, that Jaguar Land Rover developed, all of this is automated, meaning as you drive, you can start earning money. So there's a huge new uh, 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 potential for the city so that they can improve their services, but also for other car owners so they have a more seamless interaction. I think the important thing there is that you're giving the power of personal data to the person. Yeah, that's exactly. enough the company ways. So that's really, yeah. congratulations. Exactly. 
Yeah, so that's one. And the other one is also that the car can now start paying the infrastructure, like charging station, toll station. Your vehicle can even start earning money by selling electricity, excess electricity that it has. And that's really exciting. And, and after the announcement, what we work on right now is to really help Jaguar Land Rover and other partners to really bring this to production. So we are already thinking about setting up test beds where we can really trial this. I think this will definitely be one of the first applications to hit the market. And it's, it's a huge win for the entire crypto community, simply because it makes it apparent what is the true value add of utilizing a distributed ledger and the cryptocurrency for my products and for my company. So what's next? So we obviously have more announcements lined up. And we always work with big corporates where we work on concrete use cases and also product announcements. But I think the most exciting part is definitely on how we want to achieve uh, crossing this chasm. So that is why we are very much focused on our research and development team right now to really bring forth this uh, Cordyside project. So that means right now we are writing a, a lot of code to bring forth the first testnet of our new consensus approach. And we are already inviting universities to participate there. And once we feel confident, we are, we are going to now publish this to the community and open up a uh, public network so everybody can participate on what the future of IOTA looks like. And with that, we hope that we really have a path forward to make IOTA the first enterprise ready permissionless distributed ledger. And that is probably going to be one of the biggest announcements for the entire crypto community, community because everything today is still a proof of concept. And with that, we are very confident that we're going to get a lot of adoption from corporate partners, partners that we're already working and talking with today. Very exciting. We'll be waiting for that announcement. Uh, to pivot a little bit to you, Dom, if you weren't working in blockchain, what do you think you'd be doing? Oh, that's a very tough question. <laughs> I, I think I would probably have a startup in eSports. I hope I would have one in eSports. So because I, I come from the gaming community and I'm, I'm, I'm very, I used to do a lot of gaming. But I would definitely be an entrepreneur simply because it's in, in my blood to, to not be working according to a specific schema, but rather try to do my own yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> okay, so one more question. Um, you've been vocal on Twitter and uh, elsewhere about your love for the IOTA community. Can you tell us what's different about your community and why they're so special? Yeah, overall, I think that IOTA is definitely one of the top three ecosystems in this entire crypto community, next to Ethereum and next to Hyperledger. And what's very exciting is that we have a, com uh, a community of doers and builders and people that are really excited of, of unlocking this new future and enabling it. All of the other communities simply focus on, hey, how can we increase the price? When is the price going up? When, when will I be rich? Instead, our community is really fundamentally focused. How can we, together with the IOTA Foundation, really enable this machine economy and how can we contribute to that so we have people writing articles doing videos building uh, proof of concepts doing startups and that's what makes the iota community very unique simply because they're very much focused and really want to have this future happen not just because the price goes up but because it's really one of the few ways for our future society to really function all right, Dom, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for joining us. It was great getting to know you and to learn more about IOTA. Yeah, thank you. Make sure to check us out at investvoyager.com and follow us at investvoyager on Facebook and Twitter. If you're in the U.S., download in the iOS app store today.